Hey there. Hi. Yeah. Still here. Not dead. <laughs> yeah. It's been a well. It's been a crazy past uh, few weeks. Um, new job. Had to deal with a new situation. So um, maybe not as uh, these reviews. Probably not going to be as frequent as I hope. But I'm still making them. Going to make them every chance I get. And here's the next one now. As you probably saw from the title and thumbnail, this is Star Wars Visions <laughs> Season 2. Some of y'all are probably wondering, well, this is um, kind of weird. Wasn't this, like, already, doesn't this already come out a few years ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's funny. Uh, people are probably, as far as Star Wars goes, are probably uh, nowadays talking about Ahsoka, which just finished recently. But, um, you know, for me, you know, besides all the the new stuff that comes out uh, nowadays. Uh, I'm also catching up with a bunch of other things on my own time. The movies and especially series nowadays and one of them was Star Wars Visions. So, you know, for those of you who don't know, Star Wars Visions is, um, is an animated series, um, you know, telling stories in the Star Wars universe or um, maybe it's multiverse now if, uh, if, if, um, if the stuff I hear about Ahsoka is correct, but yeah. Anyway, the so these are um, animated shorts. It's it's an anthology series. Each episode is its own story, and these are all animated. And of course, and you know, the first season of Star Wars Visions came out. Everyone loved it. Everyone raved about it. It was just some of the best that's that had come out of Star Wars um, in a while. You know, uh, after the uh, polarizing reception of the the sequel trilogy, you know, people were, people were saying, talking about you know uh, Star Wars Visions, and we're talking about the Mandalorian. Like you know, this as you know, Star Wars is back. Yeah, and uh, a few, yeah, a couple of years on, you know, um, you know, receptions to the later seasons of Mandalorian have been a little mixed, and, you know, as well as, you know, the Book of Boba Fett, but then we also had um, Andor, you know, it's a, that one was a very uh, political show, very adult, so that kind of opens in kind of can of worms, but, you know, was fantastically written. We had Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, which was good. You know, it was so great to see Ewan McGregor uh, back in as Obi-Wan Kenobi, but, you know, um, not as highly praised as the others, and yeah, now we have Ahsoka, but we also got a new season of Star Wars Visions, which, for me, was very unexpected. And, you know, I gotta say, with this, with this season, they, wow, they really upped their game. The animation is is breathtaking. The storytelling, they've uh, upped the stakes uh, from episode to episode. It's, it's just, it's wonderful what they've done. It's, uh, there's, like, so many kinds of stories you can tell with that you can tell with this universe with Star Wars, more than you'd ever expect from just watching the the, the movies or some of the other shows. So yeah, it's uh, no. As far as overall, I can't really say much except yeah, the um, every episode, whatever whatever story it is, big small, it just, it keeps you engaged, and as well as the visuals and bec because each episode, one of the things about this show is that each episode is animated by a different studio, so you get a different style every time. So it's always every episode is is unique. It uh, keeps you on your toes. It's just it, it's incredible. It knocks your socks off uh, with every episode. So um, so I guess for more specifics, I'll just I guess I'll just talk about what was my favorites and what was not so much my favorites, as well as some interesting things that I found about the series. So I'm going to start with the one that I found the most visually interesting, the most visually engaging uh, for me. And since, you know, this is, a, this is an animation show. And for me, that one is actually, I think, you know, just going through and looking back at all the episodes, I think it still has to be uh, the first one, which was called Sith. Now, just uh, the, the brief uh, summary of that uh, episode was that, you know, it, it was about this, uh, you know, apprentice of, uh, of a Sith Lord who wanted to escape the dark side, but now she's, uh, uh, he, he, he's found her again, so, you know, there's a uh, race to escape from him, and there's a big fight and all that, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that, that's basically the story, uh, the story uh, summarized, but the... Why would why this one was so the most visually interesting for me was because the animation style was very was like wow it was like watching paintbrushes on uh, on a on a canvas like the canvas the canvas is the screen and you just see the paint strokes in, in motion it's like because when we when we when the when the episode opens we we are we're introduced to you know the uh, the the main character's ship but the ship is pretty is. The, the interior is just all white. So then when we see 
so when they show us the you know the unique features uh, of the ship and you know the droid because they always have droids but you know when they when they show all these features it's like it, it's it's like it forms right in front of your eyes it's like you're watching an invisible hand paint you know all the all the details all the little features the the nooks and the nooks and crannies the little corners the linings uh, of the interior of the ship and it's incredible to watch and it, it looks looks beautiful and it's, you know it's like it's like the opening animated animation sequence in Fantasia underrated Disney movie from from the from 1940 it, it, it was like that that sequence where it was just you know watching colors on screen um, in sync um, fo- accompanied by classical music it's just yeah it was it, it's just watching like paint it's, it's like watching art in motion it was incredible and uh, so that's so that was uh, the best for me visually but as far as narratively what I felt was the uh, the, the best story for me or the, the story that struck that you know that struck a chord with me the most was the the second episode which is called uh, Screechers Reach so the summary of that episode is that we have a bunch of kids who are kind of like uh, uh, manual labor in this factory they escape from it and they go they want to go to this place that's called Screechers Reach uh, to escape but also because I think they're, uh, they know they heard of some uh, rumors and some rumors of some kind of creature some kind of witch there and I think they want to go there I don't know it's a test of courage or something but also you know they want to get away f- from this and you know it's about you know them coming together as a as a kind of uh, surrogate family it's, it, it was you know it was really uh, re- re- really nice it was really heartwarming to watch uh, to watch them um, uh, interact bond stuff that, that we could see uh, through dialogue but also just through um, what, what they show us visually but why I felt this was the most narrow was the most engaging for me narratively is that you know you go along with the story and you're you know you're uh, you're 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 rooting for these kids you get to you get to know them, you see them bond so you know it's just like um it's pretty much just a, a road trip journey until you get to the end when you get to screech's reach and they confront what well, yeah it turns out yeah there is some kind of creature there's this there's this uh you know the the threat the shadow the villain that, that they end up facing which which leads to some incredible um, action sequences, incredible visuals and stuff. But when you but when you get to the very end and you find out what all this all was building to, like why, especially the main character who's this girl, was going to was going to this place. Like it just like you think you know where it's going because you see all the signs, but then also there's like you know there's stuff not uh, revealed, not made clear. And when you finally find out what it is, it's just it's a it's a real subversion of you know of this of this kind of journey about you know trying to you know uh, find yourself overcome fear and all that kind of stuff and for that and so it's a it, it's not even you know just like um, uh, the story was not just great it was gr- was great for me not because of you know some uh, big uh, themes or epic storytelling uh, like like some of the other. Uh, shorts did you know there are a lot of very much uh, deeper elements in some of the other episodes but this for me just watching that story play out and and seeing uh, the payoff for it was just so it, it was just so surprising for me it was so and sh- it once again showed me how there there's so much uh, you know you can tell so many perspectives that mm, you can that people have, have probably not explored yet with the star wars universe with, with these kinds of stories with these uh, epic uh, science, uh, fantasy, space opera kind of things. Yeah, and uh, so those were the best for me. Uh, but uh, you know, now there's of course there's probably there's the not quite as good for me. And this, and this was of course the I am your mother <laughs> short. If you, if you guys are know know about this season, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, th- that's the one that everyone probably uh, picks. It's 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 basically just. Um, uh, on Tatooine, I think I think it's on uh, Tatooine. You know, there's this race and there's this um, academy um, uh, cadet who wants to participate in in this race, but you know she has a a mother you know, whom she finds embarrassing, and you know this race is supposed to be like a, a family kind of race where a parent and a child go the uh, on this race to you know uh, show their stuff in front of, in front of the the uh, uh, the academy, the flight academy. So, and you know the the girls, um, you know. 
uh, getting in, getting bullied and stuff. So, you know, when the mom does show up to, you know, to help her with this race, of course, you know, I think it's, um, raises the embarrassment a bit more, but then she learns to, you know, appreciate and value her mother and stuff by the end of it. Of course, the, you know, it's, it's a very simple, very basic kind of story and it plays out how you would. And, you know, there's nothing spectacular animation wise, except for to watch the, the interesting, uh, the, the interesting thing of, you know, having this story be, being shown in the um, Artman animation style. So yeah, it was Artman animation that, that made this short. You know, the guys who made uh, Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. <laughs> yeah. For, for those of you who haven't seen the episode, you just, just imagine that. They got the, it's a, it's a Star Wars universe set in kind of like the, ch the Wallace and Gromit c claymation kind of universe. Yeah. So, but, you know, I, I call this the... Uh, uh, the not so great because you know it's not it's not bad and you know I can understand why they would have the story like this you know they want to tell a different kind of story in every episode and they can't just you know keep going you know big and epic which they do with a lot of these shorts you know and sometimes they uh, they want to tell the, some of the, the the smaller stories the uh, the the palate cleanse before you get to the next big thing and then this uh, this was this was one of those and you know so it's it was a nice short it's just that you know the others were just better. You know, you know, there were there was more to get from some of those other shorts, but you know, there's you know, plenty to win, to enjoy here as well. But you know, it's just that it's just um, you know, you know, you know, here's a fun little thing before we get to the you know some of the the, the meteor stuff. So yeah, uh, don't think of it as kind of like the the bad short. Well, that, that's basically what I'm calling. But what I mean is that you know, it's not a bad. It's just you know, the others were better. And yeah, so one one last thing that I want to talk about also. I mean, there, there's so much to talk about with this. You just have to, you know, watch it and you can make, uh, form your own opinions. You can probably talk about it with your friends until the cows come up. There's so much to talk about. But the one last thing I want to talk about is the episode uh, Journey to the Dark Head. And the, in, in this episode, this episode s struck me because it was the most, I guess, complex narratively, structurally. And I don't... And I don't mean like, um, you know, uh, like so much deep thematically, although it does touch on some deep things that I'll talk about. But I mean, you know, the, some of the other shorts deal with more, you know, adult, more grounded, relatable themes. But this one was complex because there was so much going on. Like in this one follows two instead of just one kind of protagonist, follows the journey of two people. And, you know, they're both of them are still fair, uh, fairly fleshed out. And there's a lot of things uh, going, going on with these characters. But... It, it it still managed to get across a lot in, in such in such a short amount of time, and it made me so much to want to learn more. So I guess, uh, and you know, it it sh and, and it talks about a lot of you know the the themes that are prevalent in Star Wars, the the nature of good and evil, how these things are um, intertwined. And so you know, it touches on familiar things, but it also shows it portrays explores them in their own very unique way in a way that you probably could only show in animation or maybe even in live action but you know they do it in 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 the in a way that works uh, for this style and it does work so i guess the point i'm trying to make is that you know with the with these shorts even though a lot of them are very straightforward stories and you know that's kind of their strength and they also the animation they can also tell far more complex stories in you know in a short amount of time in a short amount of time and you know yeah it helped it feel satisfying but also the disappointing the disappointing thing is that you know yeah you're so invested in these story in these characters and then you uh, you you realize it's over and you so want to so to know more and you know yeah, all these stories you want to know more about where okay where, where is this going to go where are these characters going to go and you you know yeah it's sad to think that we probably won't but also you feel you appreciate that you got to see these stories within uh, this larger Star Wars universe. It's fun to imagine where they might, where they might have gone, where they are, uh, within within this timeline, within this uh, wider universe. So you know, anyone who just loves animation and who loves you know shorts and wants to know how to tell um, you know engaging stories because you know shorts are very difficult. You got to get so much across in such a short amount of time. So and, you know, especially you know. In shorts, they want to deal with epic stories like Star Wars, right? Yeah, you love all that stuff. You should definitely watch this because it is just, it's just mesmerizing. It's it's incredible. So yeah, this show, uh, the series, it's it's um, 
uh, a, full, a full gold. It's it's five stars. It's ten out of ten. Go go watch it. Seek it out if you can. Really, uh, if you love Star Wars, if you love animation, if you love shorts, just go on. Find it. So there you go. I uh, hope you enjoy this and look out for the next one, whenever that might be. See ya.